Hello guys and welcome to another installment of A Computers and Technology. I am really excited today because I finally have a computer for you guys. No, it's not a garage sale. Fine, haven't been able to hit any yet. Today we are going to check out a laptop, or I guess in this case, netbook that I bought off eBay for 25 bucks plus $15 shipping. Now, if you checked out the last subscriber update, you know that I am searching for a netbook to replace my Dell Inspire on 15. Now, don't get me wrong, this is a pretty decent little laptop, but I like something a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter, uh, and this is starting to give me issues as far as build quality is concerned, and I have to take it apart and diagnose whatever's wrong with this. Still haven't done it yet, just haven't had the time. But today, we're going to unbox uh, I'm going to have a little overview. I'm going to install Zubuntu 15.10 on this. Uh, I guess I haven't even told you what type of netbook I bought. I bought a Dell Latitude 2120. Um, these come in a couple different configurations, so I don't actually know the system specifications right now because it solely depends on uh, which model I get. Some of them have the uh, Atom N450, some of them have the N550, some of them have one gigabyte of RAM, some of them have two gigabytes of RAM, and some of them have an HD screen, some of them don't. So not really sure what I'm getting with this. I do know that's a Latitude 2120, but as far as system specifications go, I'm going to have to go into the actual box and check it out. So start to ramble now. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get to the unboxing. All right, so let's see if this arrived in one piece and as advertised. I'm not 100% sure about what kind of condition this is going to be in. I mean, of course, there were pictures on the product listing, but, you know, they were sort of low resolution and I couldn't really tell. Everything looked good as far as I can tell, or I could tell, uh, but once again, not 100% sure. And if you haven't noticed, there are like uh, applesauce stickers all over this box and I'm not sure why, I really don't know. Uh, I think this box has been reused, so that might be due to the previous use as you can see. There's actually nothing under that one, so they're not used to like hide anything, so uh, not really sure why it's like that. I'm just gonna go ahead and rip the rest of the package open. Don't feel like dealing with those scissors. There we go. And it is surrounded by packing peanuts, so that's good. I can reuse those for future shipping. There we go, now you guys have a slightly better view. And I believe the only thing that should actually be in here is the laptop, or I guess in this case, netbook itself. And everything looks good. I'm gonna have to take the bubble wrap off for uh, first, but there's nothing like jiggling around or loose or anything. So that's good in that regard. And we'll just sift through here. Uh, yeah, there's, there's nothing else in here, no like papers or anything like that. So yeah, bare minimal, and that's exactly what I ordered. Bare minimal, just the laptop itself. I have a charger standing by right behind the camera, so we can plug it in and check it out and play around with it. And as you just saw, I changed the camera angle once again. Really wish I had a camera guy so I didn't have to keep making cuts, but unfortunately I don't, and I have to keep cutting everything. And for this, I definitely need scissors. There we go. I'm going to try to salvage this uh, bubble wrap as much as possible, because once again, this is valuable packing material. Um, you know, I, I ship stuff all the time, so it's nice to keep it around and actually keep it usable. But there we go, and you know, it doesn't look too bad. In the pictures, everything kind of looked a uh, bit worn down, but you know, this, this looks great, actually. It does need to be cleaned up a little bit. There is some wear and tear right here. Uh, it looks like they removed the uh, sticker right here, the window sticker. And then I'm not really sure what was right here, but it looks like whatever it was was removed at one point. And this looks like it comes with the six cell battery. Let's pop it open. And of course, I'm gonna give you guys uh, some closer B-roll in just a minute. But wow, I mean, that looks absolutely beautiful. It's in great condition. I'm really, I'm really impressed. So it's the next day and I did play around with this Latitude 2120 all night. I have yet to install a solid state drive into this. This is a Kingspec 16 gigabyte solid state drive. I just used a uh, USB version of Zubuntu 15.10 to test it out. So I think performance is definitely gonna be better with the solid state drive in there. Uh, but with this flash drive uh, and a live version of Zubuntu 15.10, Performance was actually pretty decent. Now this is the model with the Atom N450. So with that, you're only getting a single core and two threads at 1.66 gigahertz. Um, this also has two gigabytes of RAM, so that's perfectly adequate for what I need. Uh, and it doesn't have a hard drive uh, because the seller pulled the hard drive and that's why I'm throwing this solid state drive in there. And I would probably put a solid state drive in here anyway, uh, just because it is gonna make things a bit snappier. Now you can see just how small this thing is. I have the Latitude 2120 right here 
and my Inspiron 15 right here. This is a 15 inch laptop, I think 15.6 inches to be exact. And this is a 10.6 inch laptop. Um, so yeah, really big size difference here. And there's also a pretty significant weight difference as well. This is much lighter than my 15, which is awesome because I carry this around in my back pack all day and it does kind of hurt my back after a while. So to have something a bit lighter sitting around my backpack is awesome. Uh, the thing is, I'm not 100% sure if this is going to stay yet. I still have to do some testing and see if it's adequate for what I need. But so far, everything has been fine. And hopefully when we add the solid state drive in here, uh, it just gets that much better. All right, so first I'm going to give you a quick look around the netbook just so we can see what kind of condition it is in. Then I'm going to open it up, boot it up into the BIOS, and we'll check that out real quick. And then I'm actually going to tear this down and install the solid state drive on camera. So I think that's going to be really interesting for you guys. But first, let's take a quick look around. The rubberized finish on the top and bottom of the laptop is in nearly perfect condition. There are a couple scrapes and scuffs from just general wear and tear, but it's nearly perfect. If we look at the front, you can see that there is a small very minor scrape right here. There's some uh, like white paint. It looks like it rubbed up against a wall or something like that. And that's really it. If we opened it up, you can see that, I mean, there's not really anything to say. It's beautiful. It looks great. Um, there is a small smudge right here. It looks like a small scrape just from general use. Um, but besides that, Almost perfect. Durability wise, this thing feels solid. It's gonna to be tossed, dropped, and smashed in between books in my book bag, and I think it's gonna fare just fine. This rubber coating's adding an extra layer of protection to the entire laptop. This thing is built like a tank. I am really happy with the build quality. Taking a look at some of the I.O. ports, you can see that we have three USB 2.0 ports. There's two on this side and one single one on this side all alone by itself. We have a microphone jack, headphone jack, VGA out, looks like a Kingston lock slot. Uh, on this side, we have the power jack, just uses a standard Dell uh, laptop connector, and there's a, another lock slot. It's weird that this one actually has two lock slots, but it does. And then there's a Ethernet port right here. The battery is on the back right here. Let me see if it's in frame. There we go, it is in frame. So I'm gonna pop it off and we're just gonna take a look at it. According to both Zubuntu and the built in hardware, uh, I guess diagnostic on this, this thing is sitting at about 50% of its original capacity. So it will still hold a good three hour charge. Uh, this is the six cell upgraded battery, which is nice. It does add a little bit more bulk to the back of the PC, raises it up by about half an inch. So I might buy the uh, three or four cell battery just to make it a bit flatter and a bit easier to carry it around. Uh, but this battery is definitely still good. This is a uh, 56 watt hour, 11.1 .1 volt lithium ion battery. Opening the laptop up, you can see four indication lights right here, which are visible when the laptop is closed. You can see the very small trackpad right here. Uh, to my surprise, it's not as awkward to use as it looks like it might be. And then there's two physical clicky mouse buttons right here. We have the keyboard right here, which does feel pretty decent. There's a decent amount of movement within the keys, and I do type a lot. So a keyboard that actually feels nice to type on is very important to me. Uh, we have some quick access buttons right here. This one's for mute, volume up, volume down. And then we have the power button right here. There's a webcam at the top of the screen bezel and a microphone as well. I'm gonna boot it up and we're gonna go into the BIOS. There we go. Under system information, you can find most of the stuff that I've already talked about. The system has two gigabytes of DDR3 SD RAM in here. I thought it was DDR2 at first, but I guess it is DDR3 running at 667 megahertz. If we scroll down, you can see information about the CPU. We have an Atom N455 running at 1.66 gigahertz. There's some more good old system specs right there for the processor. If we go down, you can see that the system is utilizing Intel GMA 3150 graphics, and this is using the standard definition non-touch display. Uh, with a resolution of 1024 by 600. All right, so now we get to the fun part and I have to figure out how to take this apart. Well, I see four screws exposed off the bat, so I'm gonna try removing those first. I wonder if there's any under the battery back here. Are there any screws? There are two screws right here, so I'm gonna remove a total of six screws and see if this thing just kind of pops apart. Now I think there might be some screws under the keyboard now, and I need to get access to that. So let me grab a flathead. So there we go, keyboard came off okay. I'm just gonna pop the ribbon cable off. There we go. So keyboard's off and it looks like I do have a couple more screws to remove. There's one right here, one right here, one right here. And I think that's it. It looks like I only have three more screws left.
With those three screws removed, I'm hoping that the bottom will just pop off without any effort. <laughs> but there's probably going to be some stupid clips or something holding it in place. Yeah, that just doesn't feel like it's going to come off. Oh, okay, that didn't sound great, but uh, it did come out. And what are you doing? There we go. Now we have access to everything. All right, so first thing that really catches my eye here is that the uh, previous owner uh, included the hard drive screws in here. So that's great. They assumed that someone was going to take this apart and put a new hard drive in it, and that's exactly what I am about to do. So the hard drive screws are right here. I don't have to go in the back and grab some new ones. That's really convenient. Really loving that. There we go. Now you can actually see everything. If you want to check out some HD images, HD pictures will be up on my website. Link will be in the description. You can see our two gigabytes of DDR3 RAM right here running at 667 megahertz. There's the heatsink for our Intel Atom processor. It is a bit noisy, so if I do decide to keep this, I'm going to open it back up, install a larger solid state drive. I think probably one that's around 120 gigabytes. I'm also going to take this off and put some new thermal paste on it. I just don't feel like doing it right now because I have to leave in like 30 minutes and I really need to get this uh, solid state drive in and this whole thing back together. You can see our wireless card right here. There's another slot right here. I think you can add a uh, Broadcom video accelerator in here if you really wanted to, or uh, some other network connectivity card like a uh, 3G card in here would work as well. Uh, you can see the SATA connector right here. So our solid state drive is gonna go in right here and right here. I'm not 100% sure what this is. I think it might be a SIM card slot. If you actually know uh, for a fact that that is a SIM, uh, SIM card slot or it's not, uh, please post a comment in the comment section because I've never seen a SIM card slot on a laptop before, but hey, you learn something new every single day. So I'm going to pop the solid state drive out right now. We're going to plug this bad boy in and I know this is functional, so uh, no worries there. It will work once we get it in. Uh, do I have to pop the drive tray? Yeah, I will have to pop the drive tray out. Now, of course, something had to go wrong. The threads on this solid state drive will not accept these screws. So I'm going to have to go in the back and see if I can't find the screws I originally shipped with this drive. Hey, look, for once, something was actually easy to find. Ooh. Let's see if I did it right, and I think there might actually be an installation of Zubuntu on that hard drive already, even though I'm going to reinstall it anyway if there is, uh, but let's see. So system is turning on, that's good. Oh look, I was right, there is a previous installation of Zubuntu. Not sure what version it is, I think I used this to test out a uh, Pentium 4 machine a while back. Um, but yeah, I'm going to reinstall Zubuntu anyway, and then I will get back to you guys and see exactly how usable this little netbook is. I have my timer out now, and we're just going to see how long it takes to get from a completely powered off state to the login screen. So I'm going to turn it on now, and I'm going to start the timer. This is going to include the power on self test. <laughs> So there you go, overall boot time isn't too bad. It took just over 25 seconds to get to the login screen and after this it takes about, uh, you know, I'll just go ahead and log in with my temporary password, uh, which is my name. I still have to change everything. So there we go. And you can see that everything will pop up here in just a minute. So overall, including the actual login process, it probably takes about uh, 35 to 40 seconds to get completely up and running. Now just pop open the file manager. We'll navigate through uh, some of the directories just to see how responsive that is. And as you can see, it's pretty much instantaneous. It is just fine. Really responsive right now, just performing some basic system tasks. Let's try some multitasking now. So I'll pop open a uh, couple different programs. Why don't we open up Writer again? Why don't we just pop open the Software Center, an instance of Terminal, and maybe a, a instance of the Music Browser as well. So you can see that even with a couple applications open, uh, things are still pretty responsive. Now, that does start to change when you have a couple applications open and the web browser. The system really doesn't like web browsers too much. Not really enough beef under the hood uh, for comfortable web browsing. It's okay, but it can be slow at times. And this is kind of what turns me off to this machine is that the web browsing experience just isn't there. Uh, it is a tad bit slow. It is bearable, uh, but I'm not sure if it's gonna be enough for you know just everyday school use. It might get on my nerves really quick. So I'll close all of these background programs. 
and we'll just try to hit a couple websites. Now, as you can see under here, I was actually trying it out on my website, YouTube, and I browsed a couple other sites as well. I'm gonna pop open my website at first. It does take a little long to actually load everything up on this system, but eventually we do get there and scrolling around is just fine uh, on a single tab. When you start to open multiple tabs, things start to go south and things lock up, which is not good. Uh, when I'm you know, doing research and writing a research paper or something similar, I usually have like close to 50 tabs open and not really sure if this computer is going to be able to uh, take that kind of abuse. Yeah, you can see scrolling's just fine. Pretty responsive. That's all good there. We'll pop open an instance of YouTube and we'll just keep opening up tabs to see uh, if it, or I know it will, uh, how it actually slows down over time when we start to pop open more and more tabs. Scrolling through this channel page, so far so good. The video is actually playing right there and we can scroll through just fine. It does take a little bit for the page to load up once again, but once it has actually finished loading, uh, things are pretty responsive. Once again, that does change when we start to open up multiple tabs. And of course, when I updated this to all the latest updates, something broke the audio, so we're not getting any audio here, unfortunately. The audio does work with the flash drive version, so I didn't break anything when I was actually taking the laptop apart and putting the solid state drive in. Uh, but I'm going to have to go back and fix that after this video. So that's kind of unfortunate. As you can see, full screen standard definition 480p video playback is okay, but when I try to bump things up to 720p, things start to go south, and there's really no point in bumping it up to 1080p uh, because the screen's not even close to that resolution, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm opening up a couple more tabs just so I can navigate to a few more sites to show you how this will slow down after a few tabs are open. So I'm gonna navigate to something actually pretty resource intensive, which is CNN.com. So I'll go to www.cnn.com. Then I'll go to the archive site. At this point, I have six tabs open and things are starting to get a little bit unresponsive. The system is still usable, but it is getting to that point where uh, things just lock up and you have to uh, close out of Chrome and restart everything. So yeah, still responsive. As you can see, I'm scrolling through the site, but it is starting to slow down a little bit. There we go. So CNN's definitely dragging us down. I'm going to close out this tab because I don't know why, but CNN's website is just so resource intensive. It's absolutely ridiculous. And I'll throw this up to the side because it is still responding. So once again, not too bad uh, for this little atom processor, but it is still what I would consider a bit slow. And there I'll open up two tabs side by side. We'll go to a different site. And I'll pop open an instance of LibreOffice just for the heck of it. So yeah, it is a little bit on the slower side um, and I'm not 100% sure if it's gonna be adequate for you know everyday college work, but for an Atom processor, it's really uh, not that bad. I think I, I think I made it sound a little bit worse than it actually is when I was talking about it earlier. Uh, but yeah, now that I look back on it, it's not too bad for uh, this little single core dual thread Atom processor. I mean, we have all these tabs open, we have a couple windows open, and you know, it's it's a little bit slow, but it's not unresponsive. It is still usable. So. Yeah, not exactly the fastest thing in the world. Might not be adequate for my day-to-day -day tasks, but hey, not bad for this little Atom machine. So that's gonna be about it for this overview. I'm not 100% sure yet if I'm going to keep this laptop or sell it off and try something else. Um, I'm gonna have to use it for the next week and kind of get a better feel for it. I'm probably gonna make another video about this if I do decide to keep it because I will have to upgrade the solid state drive to a larger one, probably one around 120 gigabytes. Uh, I can't use the silicon power one that I have in my uh, Inspiron 15 because I have to get this back to my sister and I don't have a, another hard drive in the back so I will have to buy another hard drive. So that will be a review and a upgrade video for this coming up in the future if I do decide to keep it. And overall, this definitely isn't a bad machine. It's built for the field, really tough. I'm really loving the way it, it feels. It is a little bit thick just because of the extended battery back here. So I might try to go on uh, eBay or Amazon and find the three or four cell battery. But then again, you are sacrificing battery life with that too. So not 100% sure what I'm going to do with this yet uh, because it does add like half an inch onto the total uh, depth of the laptop. Total depth with the battery is about two inches. So yeah just a tad bit on the thick side. Performance is decent considering that this only has a single core dual thread atom in it. I mean, you, you saw we were uh, browsing the web, we had a couple applications open and it performed just fine, a little bit on the sluggish side, uh, but yeah, performance is acceptable. I, I, I would say it's definitely acceptable. 
Oh, and there's one more thing I want to mention because I didn't talk about this yet and I know someone's going to ask a question about it in the comments section. This little light right here is actually to indicate if the Wi-Fi is on or not. And I think that's because a lot of these were used in schools and you could have it up and the teacher could actually see if you're connected to Wi-Fi and what exactly you're doing uh, in that case. So that's what that little light is for. It took me a little bit to find the setting for the Wi-Fi light in the BIOS, but I finally did. And as you can see, it is on now. So I am connected to my network and when the light is on, that means the uh, Wi-Fi connectivity is active so if I disable it right now using the keyboard shortcut you will see that will turn off so I'm going to disable it and it should have turned off there you go I'll turn it back on it will take a little bit to reconnect and it will light back up in just a second I'm probably going to leave that feature off just to save on battery I mean it's not eating up that much but I want to get as much battery life as I can out of this thing so that's gonna be about it for this video if you have any questions comments or concerns besides the fact that I talk too much please post a comment in the comment section don't forget to like this video if you didn't like this video please tell me why and of course please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel by the way guys I did find a couple garage sale finds today I just got back from a uh, garage sale hunting a a couple hours ago and I found two desks two desktop systems and I will post uh, a little sneak peek of those on the Facebook page if you want to check that out also if you want to support me you can use my Amazon and eBay affiliate links and I also have a patreon uh, the link for all of those will be in the description thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next installment of a computers and technology and I just realized I forgot to give you guys some sample video and audio from the netbooks built-in webcam and in microphone so I am recording from that now. There is one more thing I want to mention before I end this video. Don't forget, I am having a giveaway for the month of April. You can check that out. The link will be in the description.